Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Vlogger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today I'm going to be talking about a highly requested topic, the law on succession. In particular, I'm going to be discussing the forms of wills, okay? Now, uh, if you've been enjoying my videos and you want to learn more, please hit the subscribe button, okay? Now, what better way to start than by defining what succession is, okay? The law defines succession as a mode of acquisition by virtue of which property rights and obligations to the extent of the value of the inheritance of a person are transmitted through his death to another or others by his will or by operation of law, okay? Now, let's go through the definition. Succession is a mode of acquisition, okay? So it is a way or a means by which an individual or individuals may come into uh, ownership over property, rights, or obligations, okay? Now, it comes from where? From the inheritance of a person. Now, this is one concept I want to clear up because a lot of people have been confused on the word inheritance. Some people might say, Oh, that is my inheritance which I will receive from my grandfather. That person is mistaken. Because what does the law understand inheritance to mean? Okay? The inheritance is everything that a person leaves behind. It's not what the person receives. Okay? So the inheritance pertains to the grandfather in the example and not to the person who was boasting about receiving their inheritance. Okay? Okay, then with that out of the way, let's talk about the other parts. Succession is a mode of acquisition and uh, acquisition of property rights and obligations over the inheritance of a person. We're done with that, no? And how are they transmitted? When are they transmitted? By the death and at the moment of the death. Okay? So again, when are they transmitted? At the moment of death and by virtue of the death of the person whose inheritance is the subject of the controversy. Okay? Finally, the law says that there are two means by which succession can uh, uh, happen. No, We have by will or by operation of law. Okay? In law, this is known as testamentary, meaning there's a last will and testament testamentary succession and intestate succession or succession which happens without a will let's say the person who died died without a will because he forgot or he did not want to make a will we have rules which will govern succession and the shares of the people who gets what in case there is no will and if there is a will there are also rules but for these rules We'll talk about it in the next episode, okay? For now, let's just go to the will, okay? We'll talk about testamentary succession, in particular, the form of the wills. How will you make a will, okay? Now, in the same way that there are uh, two means by which succession can uh, take place, there are also two kinds of wills, okay? Here in testamentary succession, this can be undertaken through two kinds of wills. We have the notarial will or attested will or the holographic will. Okay? Let's begin with the notarial or attested will. Okay? What is a will? A will is an act. Okay? Even if it's in a written instrument, it is an act whereby a person is permitted with the formalities of the law. In other words, the person has to follow the specific requirements of the law huh? in order to be valid. Okay? So, a will is an act whereby a person is permitted with the formalities of law to control to a certain degree the disposition of his estate to take effect when? After his death. Okay? So, there are two points of uh, interest here. No, First, if a person is going to make a will, it must comply with the formalities required by law. That is actually what I'm going to be discussing today. No, uh, The law has certain uh, requirements in order for a will to be valid and these must be followed. If one is missing, that will render the will void. And you cannot uh, claim any right under it anymore. Okay? 
Now, on the second point of interest under the definition of will, it states that the person is uh, permitted to control by a certain degree the disposition of his estate. I want to uh, point out that the person is only allowed to dispose of his estate to a certain degree only. Okay? You would ask, uh, isn't that unfair? The person owns that, no? He should be allowed to dispose of everything he owns if he, in the manner he sees fit. Okay? Why does the law allow this, no? This is because when the law says a person is permitted to dispose of his estate to a certain degree, there are limitations set by the law, no? Meaning, the law provides only a certain portion of the estate which the testator or the decedent may give away by will because the rest they are reserved as legitim which must be given to the compulsory heirs okay in other words if you are a compulsory heir siguradong may mana ka but let's talk about that in a different episode okay i'm just laying the groundwork the foundation in order to properly explain the two kinds of wills okay so now let's go straight to the first will no the first kind of will is the notarial will, no? And as it uh, as its name implies, it must be notarized. Okay. Now uh, the, let's uh, take up the common uh, the common requirements for the two kinds of wills: the notarial and the um, the holographic will, no? Both kinds of wills, whether it be notarial or holographic, they must be in writing and in a language known to the testator. Which is reasonable, no? How can a testator uh, dispose of his property uh, if he is a Filipino citizen who only understands the Filipino language and let's say English and the last will and testament is in uh, an African language which he does not know? Then it is highly dubious and uh, failing in the requirement, no? The will will certainly be void and no rights can arise from that disposition okay so on to the notarial will no first the first requirement is that the notarial will must be signed or subscribed the word of the law is subscribed but uh, the word subscribed merely means the mechanical act of signing no so the first requirement is that uh, it be signed by the testator now uh, what if the testator is uh, weak he can no longer write but he is still of sound mind and capacity can he ask someone to do it yes okay but the law provides a, a, a limitation no or a guard no or guidelines to protect against fraud and uh, um, undue taking of advantage no so uh, the safeguard if someone else is signing for the testator first it must be under the express direction of the testator meaning the testator himself was the one who asked the person to sign for him and second it must be in the presence of the testator meaning the testator is watching the person he asked to sign on his behalf he's watching him perform the act okay but uh, if you want to be safe the testator himself must sign the will okay Second requirement, no? The will must be attested and subscribed. Okay, so what's the difference between attested and subscribed, no? Subscribed, as I mentioned earlier, is the mechanical act of merely signing. Now, attesting, it's a certification that uh, a person has witnessed, has observed a certain act. And in this case, the witnessing of the for the specific uh, requirements here, such as the signing by the testator, the numbering of the pages, no? An attestation signifies that the witness has uh, witnessed and observed the acts attested to, okay? So, second requirement, the will must be attested to and subscribed or signed by three or more credible witnesses, okay? The requirement of three must be complied with, okay? Now, these three witnesses must attest and subscribe in the presence of the testator. Kailangan nandun si testator watching them. 
and in the presence of one another. So there are at least four people in the room, the testator and the three witnesses. If there are other witnesses, great, okay? Now, next, uh, next requirement, no? Each page must be numbered. The law actually says must be numbered in letters on the upper part of the page, okay? The law, when it was crafted, uh, required you to state 1 in 0 and E, then 2, 2 TW0 on the top of the page. But subsequent decisions of the Supreme Court have allowed uh, the letter A, B, C uh, to serve as numbering of the pages or even the uh, actual numbers 1, 2, 3. The important uh, matter here is that each page must be numbered. Why? What is the purpose? So that we will know if there have been pages that have been inserted. This is to guard against fraud no? and to protect the last will and testament of the testator. By the way, I've been mentioning testator and decedent. This simply refers to the person who died. Okay? He's the one making the will. When I say testator, he's the one making the last will and testament. Okay? Fourth requirement. Each page, okay, remember each page earlier must be numbered. Now, each page must be signed by the testator and by each of the witnesses, preferably on the left-hand side, no? But uh, Supreme Court decisions have held as long as there is a signature of the testator and each witness appears there, it is fine, no? Now, there is another requirement in relation to that, no? The testator and the witnesses must, must sign each page in the presence of each other. So similar to the attestation and subscription earlier, there are at least four persons present when signing the each page of the will. Okay? Fifth, okay? Fifth uh, requirement, there must be what is known as an attestation clause. Okay? You can just copy paste this from the law, no? But generally, uh, what an attestation clause contains what I explained earlier that uh, we certify that we have seen the testator sign, we have seen each other sign, we have, uh, we have made sure that each page is numbered, okay? It is a certification that we have seen and understood the acts that have taken place and that the signature of the testator exists as a fact, okay? Finally, the sixth, okay, the sixth requirement, uh, as in the name of the will, it must be notarized, okay? Or, specifically, it must be acknowledged. The will must be acknowledged before a notary public. Okay, what do you mean acknowledge, no? An, an acknowledgement is simply a statement, no? An oath by the person making it that the act is their free will and act, no? Free act and deed, or similar words, okay? So, uh, those are the requirements that must be complied with in case of a notarial will, no? If you are going to make a notarial will, I beg you, please follow the requirements of the law. Either you take note of this video, or you go online, you check uh, the requirements, or your best uh, course of action Hire a lawyer to help you because I do not want you to end up with a will that will just be declared void. You will be wasting effort for nothing. Okay? Now, let's go on to the second will. The second will is called a holographic will. This is simple, no? If you cannot hire a lawyer, if you do not want to take note of the requirements earlier in this video, if you... Uh, if you do not want to go to Google or uh, research the requirements for a notarial will, then this is the course for you. Take a piece of paper or anything you can write on actually because the law doesn't require any specific format. All it requires is that the holographic will must be entirely written, dated, and signed by the testator. Very easy. Only three requirements must be entirely written, signed, and dated by the testator, the person making the will. Okay? Now, it should be the testator only. There should be no other person. Okay? If any other person's writing appears there, it may be ground to nullify or render the will void. You do not want that. So, it must be entirely 
written, dated, and signed by the testator. Okay? Now, there are additional requirements later on after the death. Okay? But uh, you should prepare for it while making the will. After the death, we have proceedings called probate proceedings. Okay? Probate proceedings are the proceedings in court in which the will is proven. So in case of notarial will, the will will be submitted to the court to prove its validity and the uh, matters contained therein. The same for a holographic will. A holographic will will be submitted to the court to prove its validity and the matters contained therein. Okay? Now, what is the what are the requirements I am talking about, no? In case the will that was prepared is a holographic will, okay? Again, it is entirely written, dated, and signed by the testator himself, okay? In case the holographic will is submitted for probate in the court, there must be at least one witness who knows the handwriting and the signature of the testator who can testify that the handwriting and the signature in the will belong to that of the testator, okay? There must be at least one witness. Now, let's add, an, let's add a problem to the scenario, no? Let's say another person comes in and say, no, no, that's not the will of the decedent, that's not the will of the testator, that's a fake. Is there still a remedy? Yes, no? Earlier, we just needed the one credible witness to prove the handwriting and signature of the testator. Now, if the will is contested, someone opposes its validity, we just need three, at least three credible witnesses to testify on the handwriting and signature of the testator. Now, you may come to me and say, eh, the will was executed so long ago and uh, all the witnesses have died because they were all old when they uh, executed the will. Do we still have a remedy? Yes, okay? So what is the remedy? The remedy now is you can still avail of expert testimony. So, what is this expert testimony? Just go to NBI. Okay? At NBI, they have uh, handwriting experts as long as they can have a specimen within which to, with which to uh, compare. No? The handwriting expert will testify whether or not the specimen and the handwriting on the will match. Okay? So, again, there are two kinds of wills by which... Uh, the stator can dispose of his property this uh, this would be the notarial will which requires uh, compliance with certain uh, requisites under the law okay and the holographic will which only requires three compliance with three requirements that it be entirely written dated and signed by the hand of the testator himself okay so i hope uh, this has been uh, informative and educational for you and uh, if you want to learn more, please wait for my other videos and hit the subscribe button. See you next time!